Okay. We're just waiting for the attendees to join and uh, they're just joining us now. Welcome everyone to today's webinar. We'll give it another minute while people log in and get situated. And we'll be starting in one more minute. Again, welcome to today's webinar, Insight to Execute. Okay, we'll get things going. Uh, welcome to today's webinar from Vias, Insight to Execute, leveraging 3D Experience Platform for Enterprise Project Governance. And in today's day-to-day, uh, -day, it's from a social distance. On our panelists, joining us today is John Mallett. He's the industry process expert with lots of experience with program and project management. So John, uh, say hi, thanks for joining us today. Good morning, good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity to support you. Hey, it's a pleasure. Also on our panelists, panel today is Michael Kaltoff on the West Coast. Michael, welcome. Thanks a lot, Kevin. Appreciate everybody joining today very much. Okay. Well, let's begin. Um, when we're talking about Vias as a platinum business partner for Dassault, we have a lot of coverage and I just wanted to have a, a quick overview on the VIA solutions team. We're located, our headquarters are in Houston, but we cover North America quite well, as well as Canada, Mexico, and India. We have lots of expertise on PLM implementation, specific around the three experience platform, program and project management. We'd love to work with you. Uh, reach out to us as uh, today's information is, is delivered. We're gonna have a Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. You can use the chat panel to ask the questions and we'll make sure to cover and answer at the end of today's presentation. At this point, we're gonna start the presentation by the Inovia specialist, Garth Coleman. And at this point, I'm gonna have Garth take it away. Hi everyone, my name is Garth with the Inovia brand. And uh, thank you for joining this presentation today on Insight to Execute. And I'd like to start this presentation by talking about something a little bit different. But, but imagine you're planning a trip. It wasn't so long ago that, okay, you had the days with maps, paper maps and so on, but that wasn't too long ago. But you know, then they started having online maps and so on. You could go in and you could put in your destination and you could start to see the route you would take. Maybe you would put in some waypoints you wanted to. You'd do some research and put a really great plan together of what it was you wanted to go do. And then off you'd go with that plan. You'd have your directions printed out and then hopefully nothing changed along the way because this would not reroute, static. So you had a great plan and next thing you know you turn left instead of right or there was an accident or something and forget your plan, right? So that's how things have been. So then what happened, right? Phones, being able to have GPS enabled devices, giving you turn by turn directions with live updates. So hey, I'm gonna turn left here and then it reroutes me and says, okay, when you can, turn left and turn right and get back on track or whatever. Or, you know, it's monitoring what I'm doing and maybe I'm going a little slower than everybody else uh, that is expected because there's some traffic and then it passes that on to other people. So it says, hey, there's a slowdown here and it starts to optimize traffic, right? This live update thing. So this is fantastic. This is the way to go. And then actually this particular uh, direction tool device um, called Waze in the United States. I think, I'm not sure where else they're available, but what makes them unique from everyone else is this. 
users can actually then input above and beyond. So not only, hey, there's a slowdown, but why is there a slowdown? Oh, there's traffic, there's a hazard, uh, there's something else going on, or something's wrong with this map, or this road is closed. So users can now put additional input that then is considered by the system for everybody else. There's a great network effect that happens here. So this is really what you need to be starting to think about when you're trying to plan your definition of success in a company and then the plan needs to take a left-hand turn, are you able to get live updates and user inputs into what it is that you're trying to do and, and, and continue to be successful based on those changes? Because the reality is business and the expectations are going, uh, are just increasing and becoming way more complex in terms of what needs to be delivered, what consumers' expectations are. There's business models that are happening that are evolving and changing. So you have to have rapid decision making what's going on. Of course, products are becoming smarter, more connected, more intelligent, uh, more customized. And that's creating all kinds of challenges with respect to you know, complexity of, of, of people that need to work on these things and, and teams that need to, to be successful on those. And then, of course, there's projects. You've got to go faster. They're global in nature. They're, there's people and resources coming in from different companies. You don't own all these people. There's cross teams and multidiscipline teams. And, and ultimately, this is creating a boatload of data. Boatload of data. There's a data lake of data. And in that data lake, OK, I mean, tons and tons more product data. A lot of it unstructured, meaning it's not organized well. It's not easily found and searched for and used. And then, okay, the connected device is generating tons of information. How do you leverage all this and make sense of it all to take advantage of this and make sure that your plans stay on track or can reroute themselves to the final destination? Well, let me ask you this question. There's a study, many studies done here by the Standish Group. And okay, how many uh, projects are both on time and budget and of course deliver to the right functionality for the end customer? Any guesses? How many of your projects are there? Only 36% on average. Okay, how many are challenged? 45%. Challenge meaning either they were late, they were over budget or didn't deliver on the value. And then, of course, how many are outright failures or canceled? Quite a few. So that's a big, big challenge. Either we're, we're late, we're not delivering value, over budget. And by the way, all that complexity is just pushing things to the right. We've got to solve this problem. We've got to make it better. And the reality is, all these things that need to happen to make a project successful all the requirements that are needed, the data uh, that we talked about, you know, the schedule and information, the resources, they're all in separate systems. And every system has its own information, its own ownership and access, its own uh, there. And ultimately, you're gonna have scheduling conflicts. You get the wrong person to do the wrong thing, or they're busy, or they got pulled into something else. How in the heck do you manage reporting across all of this? And ultimately, you know, people are just waiting around. Waiting in meetings, non-value added time happens because of all of this. In fact, you know, at least a day or two a week of waste. Why are you late? I was in five meetings. I had no time to do work today because I was in all these project review meetings. So ultimately that leads to increased costs. It leads to a lot of errors because people working on the wrong stuff. They don't know where the data, I could grab the wrong thing, I worked on it for three days, and oops a daisy, can I add three more days to the project because I'm, uh, I grabbed the wrong stuff? You know, and, and, and you know, non-value added time equals poor productivity. Who wants to be a project manager with uh, the low success rates that are there? It's difficult, difficult business. How do we uh, solve this? Well, we solve it by connecting it in to the 3D Experience platform. We don't have silos. We connect everything into one central platform that offers everyone what they need and achieve something that we call invisible governance. So the data is governed, but we do a lot of automation here. We do a lot of visibility of data and make it accessible so people can make informed decisions to keep things on track. 
We also bring a whole huge amount of project analytics against all this big data, again, to have understanding of what's going on, why did it happen, what needs to happen next, and make those decisions to keep things on track. And this is really the value proposition that we're talking about when we bring in the 3 experience platform to deal with projects and give you this insight that allows you to then execute against those projects. So first and foremost, you know, advanced collaboration, which breaks down the barriers between all the different stakeholders and allows them to just have maximum communication and fostering of innovation, number one. Number two, getting rid of all that non-value added time so that everyone is maximum contributor, minimizing errors, reducing costs, giving people maximum speed because of that, time to market, but also time to quality, making sure that things are being done right first time. Being able to activate on change, being able to organize people around that, making people aware that changes are happening so you can adjust and tailor the project as needed so that you're always going to be getting to that destination. Of course, being aware of what's going on. Everyone's seeing what the stakes are, what the milestones are, what the objectives are, and making sure that information is available in real time online for people to access. And that's going to provide extreme alignment across the organization. So not only do you plan your definition of success, but as that plan evolves and adjusts, you can take advantage, be agile, and deliver on that success because everyone is aligned. Then when we apply this to project management and project analytics, I want to talk about how we deal with this product data and how we connect it in. Walk you then through into the, all the scheduling pieces that are necessary to get people aligned, make it visible. And then we bring in the invisible governance, which kind of happens behind the scenes. I'll show you what that is, what you're able to achieve. And then, and then explain how project analytics attaches to all of this to really provide a superior set of information and decision making around that. So let's start with product data, which deals with quite a lot of these capabilities and benefits we talked about. You're going to be able to collaborate more effectively. The, the innovation rate is going to go up because of that. The productivity will be there. Of course, everyone's going to have visibility because the way we're going to connect product data to schedule information. So we talked about projects, and some of them are you know, challenged, not delivering on value. And if you think about, I, lo I love this, I've probably seen uh, these variants of these types of comics, but it's, it's so true, isn't it? All right, here's what you had to work on. Here was the project. This is what was explained to you. But then, you know what? The architect understood it and architected it this way because they were in a different system and had partial information and, and maybe didn't have uh, all the information they needed. Okay, simulation was in a different silo, and uh, this is how ultimately it got simulated. Um, you know, there were changes along the way, and as the changes were documented and given to people and so on, this is what was ultimately kind of understood, like a telephone game, you know? And then, ultimately, that was the value that was delivered. Okay, I got the rope. I can swing on the rope, but, you know. So it's a simplistic thing, but it's it happens. And this is why so many projects are challenged or failed, uh, because there's so many silos of information going on here. And the way people communicate and collaborate, it's, it's very difficult. And the projects are only getting more complicated. Now, how this impacts a person in their daily work, you get into the office and you say, okay, what do I have to work on today? And uh, when when do I have to do it? And of course, you might be asking, uh, where's the information? Where's the data to work on? I got to go on this system, that system. Is it this file? Was it version 62 on Excel over here? Good luck, right? You know, by the way, grab the wrong one. There's some crazy stats here, but people, the average amount of time people work on wrong stuff is staggering. We can eliminate all this. Because, you know, finding emails, information, phone calls, there's a lot of non-value added time in that. You know, trying to give updates and endless meetings and so on. Uh, you know, it's very, very time consuming. By the way, every task, every day, everywhere you go and every person. No wonder it's so hard to be on time and on budget. We have a better way. We can make it what I call data driven. First of all, all the product data goes online in the platform. It's available and it's organized into the project that is being worked on. So we have something called folders. Okay, 
but they're bookmarks, they're web folders, they're available online. And we connect that stuff. You also have an online schedule. We'll talk about the schedule a little bit more in the next section, but generally speaking, here's my schedule and all the tasks and things that need to happen. And here's the magic in the same system where you're doing the work and, and the work that you're doing is all put together and connected. So for example, the requirements that are organized here are also connected to the tasks related to them. So there's complete visibility and connectivity from the schedule of the activity to the work that's being done. Including, you know, it could be product data as well, any data, documents, 3D data, Everything being worked on can be connected in this way. When you do that simple thing, the collaboration is going to increase because people are able to see what others are doing and can take advantage of that collaboration online with great agility to deal with change. The requirements change, well, the people on the task get the requirement automatically as part of their task. They know it's changed. As they evolve, it's all being managed in the same system. So the visibility to everything will just be phenomenal for everyone. And also, this is live and online in real time updatable, so everyone is aligned all the time, no question. If you happen to be a CATIA 3D Experience user, and you have to work on design data in your, in your 3D Experience CATIA world, you have all the context in your environment. You don't have to go to a separate project tool or anything else. You are inside of CATIA, and there you have your design data, your folders, your other documents, deliverables, and tasks, all there for you in your environment to get all the context, to browse around. Where was that requirement? Right there. What task am I working on? This is the one, and so on. You have it all there. Let's say you don't have 3D Experience Katia, but you have Katia v5. We bring the platform to you. The tasks are there inside of your CAD environment. By the way, please do this design task. And oh, yeah, there's the design. OK, how do you work on it? Drag and drop. Open it up. No mistakes, no non-value added time, no confusion, working on the right data. By the way, same thing in SOLIDWORKS. Inside SOLIDWORKS, here's your task to work on, there's the data to work on, and then you want it, you drag and drop, you got it. You work on it, you save your changes, you update the task. If something's unclear, there's a comments, you can do your comments and so on. Do this in uh, other CADs as well. Here's Sandhar. Sandhar is a transportation mobility component designer supplier. And just like everybody else, we want to reduce their costs, try to some standardized processes, some automated processes, and, and consistency between what everyone is doing. Who doesn't want that? Right? Well, they wanted that. And, you know, from design through development, and of course into their APQP um, uh, product planning. So they adopted the platform and brought in templates and standards and so on for project control, for creating, for reviewing, for monitoring and recording of what's going on, they have records and so on, and they implemented this capability. And here's what they had to say. Try to unpack that statement a little bit. Visibility. Complete visibility. Everyone is collaborative, they're more efficient, and in their case, they pass the benefits to the customer. Other companies might take that and maybe foster some more innovation or reduce their costs or whatever. Up to you as a business to decide how to take advantage of these types of savings. So that's a little bit on product data and connecting the product data into the schedule. Now let's talk about the schedule, where you're going to set up your plan, set it in motion, and have extreme agility and visibility into what's going on so everyone can collaborate effectively. So traditional file-based project approaches, whether you're Excel or Project or whatever tools you're using, are great, but they're files, which means if I want it, you've got to send me the file, make a copy, send it to someone else. The second you send a file, it's out of date, always, always. So they're fraught with challenge because of this file-based nature. You're kind of done before you even begin. And they're static. You change your file, I don't get to change. There's so many copies floating around out there. The updates are manual. And as I said, everything's out of date immediately. 
So it's a great initial planning tool, but really hard to keep things up to date with a monumental kind of heroic efforts. We solve that by taking, you can take that plan or, and put it here or start here and have a centralized plan online. That's a schedule that has everything you need. It's got your typical stuff, your phases, your gates, you know, tasks, milestones, all that stuff is there. Okay, you got your dependencies, this happens before that, start to finish, finish to finish, whatever it is you need to do there. And of course, what's the critical path on things that need to be done, auto-calculated in real time based on what's happening. And it's got all the other stuff in terms of the connectedness, the updated. So that's the plan, but then all the tasks themselves, okay? So sub-projects are connected and rolled up. That's nice. Your statuses, your dates, the percentage of this completed, and of course, as we saw before, the deliverables, the product data is all connected and updated. So if a requirement was updated by somebody else two seconds ago, and I click on that, I'm going to get the latest. If there was 3D here, I could drag and drop the 3D into 3D play and see the latest design as of this very second. There's no waiting. So static becomes dynamic. Many copies, uh-uh, it's online, one copy. It's data-driven, not manual, and it's not out of date. It is live in real time, all the time. This is the way to go. I would not manage project any other way anymore. Be online, okay. Visibility goes way up being online. Take a look on your iPad, iPhone, whatever, get notifications into what's going on. Extensive collaboration by everyone, and that productivity is going to go through the roof. So I call it a digital data-driven approach. Online, digital, driven by data. But you know, here's the thing to think about. This is a live project. If someone goes in and changes a duration, the duration is going to change. That's excellent, but it's also like, wait a minute, am I on plan? Am I ahead of plan? Am I behind? Where's, what's going on here? So you have the idea now to, you know, say take a look at this phase right here, a couple of tasks. Well, you have the ability now to compare, do a comparison between maybe some baseline or from yesterday to today or whatever, however you want to organize and set up your, your, your situation here to compare because this might have been what it looked like when I had my, my baseline last week and here's where I am today. I can compare. Because when you're digital online all the time, I can't look at file v1 and file v2. I get to look at as is real now, and I can also look at some baseline. The other really cool thing you can do is as you're starting to figure out what to do next, you can do experiments. You can move things around, change some resources, do all that stuff as an experiment. If you like the result, you make the experiment live and everyone gets the update. Of course, resources need to be assigned, and we're in a global workforce, so having working hours, uh, calendars of availability, let's say, with holidays and so on, being able to know that information, we have that support. You know, being able to understand the, the loading and who's, who's loaded and what times and so on, being able to, to get the resource loading and timesheets and so on. Of course, assigning resources, here's all the tasks, you want to assign them, it's one click. Assign the tasks to everybody, get, get going that way pretty quick. You can also partially assign tasks as well. And then, you know, here's a view of kind of what it could look like in terms of a dashboard that's online for someone who could say, okay, you know what? Here's my projects I'm working on. Uh, here's, a, you know, a Gantt of one of the projects I'm working on. So I can just drag and drop and see the Gantt of that one. Drag and drop, see the Gantt of that one. Here's my tasks that I'm working on over here. Here's, uh, here's some bookmark folders for the project. I could also put like a 3D play. So if there's a 3D model, I could drag and drop and put it in there. Point is, this is an environment that is tailorable by the end user. So as a project manager, your view of the project is going to be much different than, let's say, the person beside you who's one of the members of the team. But you as a project manager or anybody can actually set up dashboards and share them with everybody. So now project reporting is, go to my dashboard. It's all there. By the way, it's updated live real time, so you as a project manager don't have to do anything. It just is. This is what it is. It's awesome.
By the way, real time allows you to roll up and give you this type of view of all the projects or some projects below. You know, what is the progress? What's overdue? What's to do? What's the, what's the stuff coming up this week? What deliverables are there? Uh, are, are deliverables late or not? What are the critical tasks, the top level tasks, burn downs? All that stuff is calculated automatically. Automatically. That allows you as a project manager to then focus on your value add, which is identifying risks, opportunities, dealing with issues, budgeting, timesheets, all those other stuff you can, you can manage now as a project manager. You don't have to be a person running around getting statuses all the time. Okay? Here's a little demonstration of that. Here's the live chart. You can go in and look at the schedule of this. You can see there's a schedule. Got some phases here. You can expand this down a couple levels. All right? You see deliverables, whether they be specs, whether they be 3D data, are all connected to the tasks themselves. Not just here, anywhere that task goes, those deliverables are there. Of course, having a Gantt chart, it's important, you want to visualize that. But this is live. This is not a snapshot. This is live. When these things change, this changes. So you, you create snapshots of these or baselines. You can compare and review. You can edit things as you go. You can do some trial and error. And then if you like it, you make it live and you push it out to everybody. And then everybody gets it. So something that for me was due three days from now, and you made a change, it's now due tomorrow, it shows up in my collaborative task Kanban as saying due tomorrow. So I just have to look and see and be told what to do. I follow and I get it done. Okay, critical path. Okay, just some basic stuff there. So here's a customer, another transportation mobility customer called Superjet. Here's what they had to say. Who said project management is easy, right? It's easier, faster, simpler, quick. Are those adjectives you would use to describe project management? How would you like to do that? Pretty cool. All right, so that's how we connected schedule in. So we saw product data, we saw schedule. Now let's look at something that can be achieved that I like to call invisible governance. What the heck is that? Can we make this even better? You bet we can make this better. Think about this. Here is your project. You know, some phases and gates, milestones, what have you, right? And inside of those are a whole bunch of tasks. Question is, is the task 45% done? Is the task 60% done? I don't know. It's manual. And by the way, it's perception based by the person who owns the task. Maybe it's like off on. You know, zero to 100. Maybe someone's always 50%. Maybe, you know, who knows? And then you roll up these tasks, whether it's 10 tasks, whether it's 1,000 tasks. What the heck is the status of this project? Okay, things are done, great. But if things aren't done, are they going to be done? How on earth could you possibly know with everyone being manual and perception based? Hence the need for many status, phone calls, emails, whatever, meetings to try to make sense of all this. But imagine now, though, what we call invisible governance. So when you have a deliverable, whatever that deliverable it could be, it could be a CAD model, it could be a document, a sales presentation, whatever, that deliverable has a life cycle. So the idea is you attach the deliverable to the life cycle and you create rules. You define what the rules are, okay? It's in work, it's 45% because the guy started it. Oh, you know what, he froze it. Because it's, uh, it's finished, okay, we'll mark it 60. It's in some kind of review cycle and so on and so on. This is invisible governance. This is automatic. And by the way, it's fact-based by rule. So now you can have confidence and clarity that based on these kind of fact-based reporting, you kind of have a good sense of what's going on. Because people are doing work. But let the system track it all for you automatically. And that's invisible governance. And that's what's going to be real time with the real time dashboarding and, and security and knowledge in there. Okay? It takes a little bit of configuration to make it work because of your rules might be different or different things might have different rules, but it's possible to do. Very possible to do. Now let me talk about analytics because with all this explosion of data, this data lake of information, you need to make sense of it all. And actually, by analytics here, I'll say project analytics, because there's other analytics that we do as well, but let's talk specifically project analytics. Now, the great thing we have in the 3D Experience platform, number one, it's a collaboration engine. 
extreme collaboration happening, the online, digital, real-time, uh, cloud-based if needed, um, extreme collaboration engine that we have. We also have a very amazing science engine to do modeling and simulation, but we also have a data science engine for big data. So all these things are connected in one place on the platform. And when we connect that in, it's really interesting because you think now about analytics as it relates to the, uh, the, the innovation going on. So this says data. So data, if you're thinking of like CAD data, that's very structured. It, it, it is relationships. So you've got to be able to traverse and understand these relationships, whether they're directly related or indirectly related. And understanding that. And okay, there could be 3D. So understanding some 3D stuff, the shape, the positions, you know, those types of things. Of course, documents galore, whether they're organized or not, project issues, internal to the team, external to the team, of course, all the reports that are out there, being able to parse all those. There's tons and tons of data, as we mentioned. So you index all that data and make it available now as information especially when you take issues in 3D and you connect them together. Well, I call it contextualizing the information. Making it searchable and, and retrievable by anybody so it's accessible to that information so that teams can collaborate and learn and understand what's going on. That is what's really going to drive what we call knowledge and know-how because now people can have insights into what's going on and they can start to look ahead and say, hey, here's what might be happening, and I've got confidence in my decision making because I have real-time information, not something that's three weeks old and wrong. So project analytics, okay, this is a dashboard. It's available online. Uh, there's choices here, and there's you know, simple ways to get into the data. Show me my late tasks. Not just in this project, but every project that I'm working on critical projects and so on. So there's, there's reports that are there, you just click on, you navigate down. But you can also navigate sideways or bottom up or all over the place. So it's a highly navigable uh, utility, whether it's by managers to see top down or by individuals to kind of see collectively bottom up, drilling into things and, and actually seeing what's going on. That's everything in the project because it understands the project, it understands the connected relationships, it understands life cycle statuses and things like that. But it also can connect to external data. So, you know, costing, pricing, budgeting information, timing, scheduling, so on, other systems, other external issues, and so on. Uh, being able to then bring all that other data into this paradigm as well. And this is really then going to allow you to understand what happened be able to drill down and say, why did this happen? And then have all the information to then say, okay, what do we need to do to have an improvement here and, and continuously make this better? Here's a little demonstration. Secure login. So this is not anybody analytics, this is secure analytics. You can start asking questions against the data. Okay, against your dashboard here. You have some different options you can choose from here start to drill into. Again, uh, where's the data coming from? Lots of different places can get the data from. You could say, focus just what I care about. I don't care about the company. Focus on my stuff. There's my stuff. All right, so being able to not only see the summary reports, but then to start to drill in all right, and refine the data, find what's relevant to the questions that you have to look for the information get to the real data based on what you're selecting. So filtering the scope based on information. All right? Analyze resource usage, everything. So all this data can now be seen in context, filtered, navigated, drilled down, drill back up, report. Uh, all these capabilities are there. All right? We could spend a whole webinar talking about analytics, but you get the idea. Once the data is there, you can start dealing with this. By the way, you can look at this in terms of change and issues as well to help inform your projects. And this is really when we combine all these things together, this gives us now what we call the insight to execute. So everything with project management we talked about, the schedule, the deliverable, the resources, online, accessible, real time. All the project intelligence with the analytics, with external data, the dashboards that you can drill down and drill up and everything else, all of this connected together in the platform, giving you actionable insights and informed decisions. 
And that's what we call insight to execute. This is what uh, Strand has to say. Very simple statement, but very powerful. The analytics that they're able to apply inside a PLM, in our case, we can apply the same analytics also in project, right data, right decisions. So that's the project analytics and PLM analytics piece that we can attach in. So all these elements here, the product data being connected to the schedule, all the scheduling tools that are now online and connected, the invisible governance to have fact-based reporting and PLM analytics to have informed decision making, be able to achieve all these capabilities to improve the collaboration to foster innovation, reduce all that non-value added time and, and have dramatic improvement in productivity and, and speed and quality, having agility to activate on change, be aware of what's going on, make decisions around that, visibility to all the information that's available online and updated in real time so that you have this alignment. So you plan your definition of success and as that plan needs to adjust, everyone is aware of that, they are aligned to it and you have the best chance of not only being on time and on budget, but being early and under budget. And that's insight to execute. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So thank you for attending today's webinar. Um, Michelle, if you want to uh, unmute and see uh, the questions that we have available that we can answer. OK, we have. Uh, a, a question that came up on, can you calculate earned value against baseline requirements? Um, John, are you there? Can you uh, address this one? Yeah, currently today we do not support the calculation of earned value. That's a very complicated um, set, of cal uh, set of calculations and we didn't get it right, so there was some elements of custom code available probably three years ago, and we pulled it out and said, uh, we're gonna put it into the system at a later date. I do not have a time frame for that at this point. Okay. Um, can you hear me now? I can hear you fine, Michelle. We lost okay. you there, but I'm <laughs> so, glad you're back. Sorry about that. Not a problem. Um, we had one more question, I guess, um, regarding this presentation. Um, many couldn't make it today, so is there going to be a recording? Um, yes, we will make sure that a replay is made available for uh, all that, that need to access it. Um, Michelle, was there any additional questions that came up? Yes, there were a few. Thank you. Um, can I access from my phone or tablet? Uh, John, you want to take that one? Yes, the answer uh, is yes with the latest release of software from DS. Uh, we are mobile enabled. Okay. Um, another question, can I use my PTC and SolidWorks models with this? Um, Michael, did you want to handle that one? Uh, so yes, there's uh, there's integration capability um, in the system between between other third-party systems. We have to know a little bit more specifics about those models uh, as we get into it. But yes, um, we do we we do have uh, tremendous integration capability uh, already built into the platform and into some of the software used in the platform. So we'd have to dive into a little bit more more detail there to to answer that question. Okay. Great question. And the next, any more? Yep, looks like we have one more. Um, how does this work with my MS project and Excel files? Okay, uh, being the project expert and industry process expert, John, I'm gonna let you handle that one. Yeah, no problem, that's a great question. Uh, it comes up very frequently. We have the ability to uh, import and potentially export um, into Microsoft Project. What we see from a best practices perspective, and if you saw in the video how the schedule is live and provides the real-time updates, not only of individual tasks, but also of the um, gates and milestones and all that. What most people end up doing is leveraging Microsoft Project the first time to 
import what we would call a template, uh, which is then the basis for all active projects moving forward. And then they make the modifications and uh, deliver all the invisible governance and uh, tracking slash reporting inside of our tool. Uh, Excel would be the same way. We usually just leverage that to create the initial template from which then uh, the execution of which or modification based on um, a similar project, but slightly different. So I know it's like project A, but I'm gonna call it, you know, A prime. Uh, you make those changes within our tool and then move forward. Okay, great answer. Um, was there any uh, additional questions asked at this point, Michelle? That looks like all the questions for today, Kevin. Okay, well, again, I wanted to thank everybody in this uh, social distancing environment that they took out the time to, to listen and, and join with us today. So we did want to say thank you. And at the same time, uh, we did want to ask that for those that couldn't make it today, um, please feel free to uh, access us on our website. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel. I think this today's recording will be going up on the YouTube channel. If you have a program or project management engagement or project that you really want to see what Insight to Execute can do, please don't hesitate to, to reach out to us at Vias. We'd love to work with you. Um, that being said, I think we're going to close things today and uh, wish you a safe and social distancing day. All the best to you and your family. Take care.